So guys, um, we're going to do chapter seven, and um, there's a little bit involved chapter. Of course, they offer an immunology course in uh, major universities like UOP, and um, they spend one entire semester with lab to go over these materials. But uh, I'm going to try to do it in what? Uh, 45 minutes, as I said, it's a long one. I, I said at the beginning, half an hour, but sorry, this is not gonna take half an hour. This is uh, most likely it's gonna take like 45 minutes or so. There are a few things I like to emphasize on, and there are some very important things I'm just brushing through, passing through them, um, which I think it's better if you uh, take a course, if you're interested in this, Take a course in immunology and then you will learn it uh, more. So again, this entire chapter is devoted to lymphatic system, but you, you will see a big bulk of it is on immunology. Uh, so let's go ahead and then uh, talk about lymphatic system. Well, there are four functions. He uh, labeled them for you here. Uh, the interstitial fluid, the fluid outside of a cell is called interstitial fluid that is absorbed by lymphatic system. And it's uh, all of that is dumped uh, near the heart by the subclavian uh, vein. Uh, so you will see that. And then the other one in your gut, in your intestine, there are these uh, little lacteal inside of the villus, which we will talk about it. Uh, these lacteal will absorb large fat molecules. And again, uh, they uh, eventually uh, put it in the lymphatic system and production and maintenance of distribution of lymphocytes. We'll talk, talk about that. The thymus gland right here. I should put my hand. Thymus gland is right here. Thyroid gland is here. Thymus is here. It looks like a butterfly. And then uh, helps in defense against pathogens, of course. That's a big chunk of uh, this chapter is the last one. Uh, Lymphatic vessels it carry uh, fluid uh, through the lymph. Lymph is called the fluid of the lymphatic um, uh, system. Begins uh, in blind in it, lymphatic capillaries in tissues and lymphatic, uh, they ended up in thoracic, the thoracic ducts into the right lymphatic system and so on and so forth. Again, I'm not gonna read everything to you guys. Uh, you can read it and then um, understand it a little bit. Uh, and if you have any questions, we have those review sessions, you can ask questions. So the lymphatic vessels, you can, you can see the vessels right here and their lymphatic nodules right here that are throughout your body. They're all over your body. You have a good amount of your lymphatic um, nodules, lymph nodes, they call them. Your lymph nodes, they are, the tonsils are the biggest lymph nodes in your body, okay? And then you have a good amount of them under your armpit and then also in your groin area. Those are the greatest amount of them you can find them. And they're connected together by tubes, okay? Those are called lymphatic duct. So all of the lymph that is collected, they are emptied right here. I want you to pay attention to this one. They are emptied into the subclavian vein, uh, which is eventually end up near heart. See, right here again, uh, subclavian vein, subclavian vein. I would like you to know that term. Okay, so that's pretty much it uh, right on this diagram. Lymphatic vessels continues the anatomy and then the valves prevent, uh, just like veins, they have valves. These guys have veins also. And then movement of largely depends on the skeletal muscle contraction, just like your veins you do not have a uh, pump in your body to bring the blood into the heart. Remember that, we talked about it, same as lymphatic vessels. It's your contraction of the muscles, skeletal muscle, bring the limb into the lymphatic system. Anyhow, primary and secondary lymphatic organs, there are two types. So the primary ones are red bone marrow and thymus. As I said, thymus is right here. As you age, the size of the thymus gland, it shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and shrink and shrink. When you're younger, of course, it's getting bigger, larger, but as you age, I would say it's 25, 30, uh, it starts shrinking. 
And that's why older people are more susceptible to diseases. They have weaker immune system because of the size of, uh, because the size of the thymus gland. And then you have thyroid gland here, thymus gland right here. I hope you guys can see that thymus right here, thyrus right here. When I was, when COVID-19 was occurring, I was watching a few uh, videos. They said, yeah, you should hit your thymus gland right here. So it wakes up and then it makes um, T cells, which we'll talk about that here in a minute. So secondary lymphatic organs are lymph nodes, uh, spleens, tonsils, and so on and so forth. Here they are giving you a picture of uh, each one of them, lymph nodes, spleen, uh, thymus, and red bone marrow. So he talks about red bone, red bone marrow, uh, site of production of blood, of course, your red blood cells, white blood cells, big bulk of them are made uh, in your uh, bone marrow. So most have a red bone marrow, only a few uh, do in adults. Uh, B cells, uh, lymphocytes mature here also. Uh, thymus, as I said, is right here. Uh, thoracic cavity, heart, largest uh, children and shrinks as we age, I'll talk about that, uh, uh, produces thymosin, it's a hormone that maturation of T cells or T lymphocytes, which I will talk about that and their functions later on. Um, immature T cells move from marrow to thymus where they uh, mature. Okay, uh, the secondary lymphatic organs, spleen, and then um, a few things about spleen he's talking about. Uh, of course, people who loses their spleen or in an accident or whatever happens, um, uh, they should be careful not to come across any disease. Uh, they should um, uh, be, care be more careful. Anyhow, uh, lymph nodes are found along the lymphatic vessels. So we talked, I talked about all of that a little bit. Lymphatic nodules inside of the lymph node, there are little lymphatic nodules. Maybe I should go back right here. You're seeing uh, right here. Okay, very good. This is a uh, lymph node, and inside of it, these are lymphatic nodules. Those nodules, you can see that, those little circles right here, those are lymphatic nodules. No, I lost my place, that's okay. So, um, tonsils, located in, in the pharynx, and uh, uh, Peyer's uh, patch, they are found in the intestinal walls, and appendix and uh, fight infections that come out via the digestive tract. Uh, again, they are uh, look like uh, lymph nodes, and in, in, if you take zoology, you will see it under a microscope. Okay, in the innate immune defense is um, we have two types of immunity. One of them is called innate, and the other called is adaptive two types of in, uh, immunity. The innate is uh, pretty much you were born with it. Adaptive is as you age, you develop some immunity towards some diseases, okay? So two different things. The one that you were born with it is called innate, fully functional without previous exposure to pathogens. And then the adaptive initiates when exposure to it, the pathogen occurs, okay? The pathogen is bacteria, virus, parasites. It's all called pathogens. Innate, of course, is non-specific. Anything that comes inside of your body, the innate immunity will try to get a hold of it. Say, hey, where are you going, guy? Okay. So it includes physical and uh, chemical barriers. I will talk about that. The inflammatory responses and protective proteins. So there are three of them. The innate, with uh, the one that you were born with, okay, if you would, there are three of them. Physical, inflammatory, and protective proteins, which we call, I will talk about that here in a minute. Have no recognition of a pathogen and no memory, okay? Um, they do not recognize anything. They just go ahead and attack anything that gets into the body. And of course, there's no memory. Uh, if you're in, reintroduced with that pathogen, they just treat with it the same, okay? And that's unlike, when you say memory, that comes, that's very important. When you say memory, that means if you had the adaptive immunity, it means you develop memory. So next time you come across it, 
it is um, a faster response. Physical and chemical barriers, the first line of uh, defense against pathogens. Uh, again, I'm talking about innate immunity, the one that you were born with. Uh, physical and chemical. Physical is your skin. You were born with it. Uh, the skin has lots of things. Chemical, the acidic environment uh, in your uh, stomach, in your belly, it will kill a lot of um, acidic secretion, sebaceous glands. We can kill and bacteria. And uh, of course, he's not talking about bacteria, he's talking about skin, uh, sweat, saliva, and tears. They have a lysozyme, which they also kill uh, any. Uh, anything that, that tries to enter the body. The other one, I'm sorry, the uh, mucus one, which is um, you have mucus in your digestive tract, you have mucus in your eyes, you have mucus in your lungs, any bacteria getting there, those mucus gives you some immunity, some protection. Not all the way, not 100%. Uh, first line of defense continued. Um, chemical barriers, uh, acidic, uh, as I talked about that, normal flora of microbes. So in your gut, you have some bacteria which protects you uh, against some diseases, uh, some bad bacteria or some other organisms. Um, so I knew that one of them is uh, Ischia coli, E. coli, and the other one was, um, oh, I'm forgetting the uh, lacto, um, anyhow. I forgot the other one. These are good bacteria. Chronic use of uh, antibiotics, can, of course, can uh, imbalance your gut. That's why after you take antibiotics, uh, it is recommended that you take those uh, probiotic pills. Again, it's up to you. It depends on your doctor. It gives you any or not. Okay, over your immune, uh, immunity, the barriers, uh, like skin, the protective proteins, which we'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, phagocytic and uh, natural killer cells. So inside of your uh, body, there are some cells, they're called natural killer cells. Uh, they uh, protect you against these um, bacteria, uh, whatever you ingest, fungi. And of course, inflammatory uh, responses, which are, that's another two, three slides right here. Okay, the inflammatory response, uh, there are four things. Anytime you hear the inflammatory response, four things should come to your mind. Redness, heat, swelling, and pain. So if you cut yourself or you have some, uh, if you feel pain and redness here without even cutting yourself or swelling in here, then Houston is a problem. It is a problem in there, so it needs attention. Chemicals such as histamine released by damaged cells. You've heard of histamine during springtime. You get allergies and you're worried about histamine. You take drugs that are antihistamine to slow down production of histamine. And what histamine does, it, it causes the capillaries to dilate, becomes big, and become more permeable uh, to leakage of the you know, white blood uh, cells. And then so they can fight the pollens in, your, in the case that I'm talking about. Inflammatory response, the hallmark response of redness where they seeing expo, uh, excess blood causes the skin to red and becomes warm. Increased temperature inhibits uh, growth of pathogens. Most, uh, that's fever. Fever is not part of the inflammatory response, but uh, it has its own chapter in the book. But what it is, a fever, when the temperature rises in the body, it's a good thing. It kills bacteria and uh, mainly bacteria, I cannot talk about viruses, it will kill them. So steps of inflammatory response, uh, right here, step number one, uh, tissue is injured and mast cells, uh, they are natural killer cells, they go to the sides and release histamine and causes uh, capillaries to dilate. And when the capillaries dilate, then the white blood cells leak out and they come to the infection, uh, such as neutrophil, uh, monocytes, macrophages, and then macrophages, phagocytic pathogens, and release cytokines and stimulates the inflammatory response. Number three, neutrophils and monocytes become macrophages squeezing through capillaries and phagocytic pathogens occur, and blood clotting uh, walls and 
capillaries, all of those occur. Um, and inflammatory response, again, um, there is more into it, but um, that's all you have to know. That's all I want you to know. Your blood, your textbook wants you to know uh, when you take immunology, there is more into that. And I talked about neutrophils, what they do, and then uh, so on and so forth. Um, the one other thing, very important, you should know cytokines. Right here, uh, neutrophils becomes overwhelmed. They secrete cytokines, chemicals that attract more white blood cells. As I said in the previous chapter, neutrophils are the very first. They're like a fireman, they're a policeman. They are at the site of infection first, okay? And then they call in, uh, they release cytokines, they call other uh, white blood cells such as monocyte. Okay, protective immunity, complement system, it is again something you were born, it's a part of innate immunity that uh, what happens, I'm not going to read all of this, you guys read it, what happens when a person is introduced to a bacteria or something, your body makes protein molecules which, called, which is called complement system. And these protein molecules go sit on top of the bacteria and poke a hole. They just open up a hole and that hole allows fluid from outside of the bacteria or body goes into the bacteria first, the bacteria will die. Right here. So these are complement proteins. They go sit on the bacteria. This is a bacteria. Okay, when they go sit in the bacteria, they poke a hole into the bacteria, and voila, the bacteria find, dies eventually. So again, that is a part that you were born with. Your body makes these protein molecules as needed. Okay, protective proteins, interfront, interfronts, they are uh, molecules that are responsible to kill viruses, okay? That's what interferons are for. And binds to receptors and non-infected cells causing produce substance that interferes with the viral protection. That's what interferons are, just viruses. Okay, adaptive immunity, that is something, yeah. for example, if you were exposed to a bacteria that I was not, not exposed, you have the immunity against that disease, that bacteria, food poison. I never got food poisoning in my life, okay? For example, a lot of you got food poisoning. So what happens that right now, if they test you, they take your blood and uh, they look for antibodies, adaptive immunity, they find out that you had food poisoning, okay? They take my blood and look at it. No, I did not have uh, food poisoning ever because I do not have the antibodies in my body. Let's go over top one. Adaptive uh, defense comes in uh, play when uh, non-specific defense. It's a non-specific. It's not innate. You remember that? So your body makes the antibodies to fight them, fight the bacteria or fungi or a parasite. Okay, provide some protection against cancer. Of course, responds to antigens. Immune system recognized as, as a foreign. Uh, fragments of bacteria, viruses, molds, and parasites forms all can be antigen. Adaptive defense, abnormal plasma membrane proteins posed by cancer. Um, that has, a, I mean, why your text? Well, I guess it's just giving you a little bit of cancer here, uh, but that is a chapter by itself. It should be a chapter by itself. Anyhow, adaptive defense conclude um, depends on the action of B cells, B lymphocytes, and T lymphocytes, which I will talk about that. Each lymphocyte has only one type of receptor, the receptor is antigen lock and key, cell mediated and antibody mediated, uh, two pathway of adaptive immunity, cell mediated and antibody mediated, and they work together. Okay, it's, I, you cannot separate them too much We'll talk about them. You see it. But these two work together. So in, in antibody-mediated community, call, also called humoral immunity, and these cells produce antibodies right here. Okay. So the adaptive immunity is cell-mediated. As you guys can see, he's breaking it down, cell-mediated and antibody-mediated. 
Okay, cell-mediated, the, uh, the uh, targets are antigens on the surface of the cell. Antibody-mediated, there are targets uh, are free of the antigens. And what happens with the cytokines, the protein molecules that are released and stimulate these guys. Where these cytokines came, as I said, these two, they work together. Okay, so where did the cytokines came from? Right here, from cell-mediated immunity. If that cell antigen, uh, antigen presenting APC, you will see it later on, antigen presenting uh, cell is exposed to the antigen, these are the antigen, they're exposed to it, then they start making the cytokines. Okay, cytokines stimulate the T cells. T cells eventually differentiate to B cells. B cells starts making the antibodies right here. Okay, and when the antibodies attach to the antigen, and then phagocytic macrophages are able to eat them. Without the antibodies, the macrophagocytic uh, uh, phagocytosis cannot Okay, I hope I made some sense. I know and this is a very, very involved situation, but if, if you want me to explain it later on during your view session, I'll be more than happy to explain that to you. So B cells, antibody mediated immunity, as I talked about them, they make uh, uh, antibodies and they clone themselves and they clone themselves. And of course they make memory cells. So next time that you're infected with the same pathogen, uh, whatever it is, then they go ahead, they bypass a lot of steps and they go right into making the antibody and put the chip right here. Some B cells become memory cells, okay, which become active in the future in uh, encounters with the same antigen. Okay, B cells, clonal selection. Again, these are important. They is telling you that our oh, B cells uh, multiply and multiply and multiply uh, to be ready. Apoptosis, it means program cell death. All of your cells from your head to your toe, every seven years, some cells are faster, some cells are slower. Your red blood cells, 120 days, your skin cells, and then, uh, every two to three weeks, uh, your neurons, your muscle cells, every uh, six, seven years, they die, new ones grow. When they die, it's called programmed cell death, okay, right here. So a programmed cell death, it means the cells of the body that die, and of course, uh, new ones go back. So after infection, it has been overcome, the plasma no longer needed, so the cells go under cell death. That is different than uh, necrosis. Structure of antibody, uh, so it's a Y shape, and right here, uh, all of those readings, they are, these are all protein molecules. So you have a short chain of protein molecule, a long chain of protein, long chain of protein, short chain of protein. And then this segment of the protein, of the amino acids, proteins are made up of amino acids. That segment of the amino acids, they're constant. That's what they call them C region. They call them C, it means constant. V is for variable. The amino acid sequence are variable. They're variable because of the different anti antigen you come across. This is an antigen, okay? That antigen, it comes in contact with the antibody, but your cells make this antibody specifically for that antigen. For example, I never had food poisoning. When I go and give my blood, they check and say, oh, this person does not have the antibody right here. You guys can see that, the antibody. You, God forbid, if you had food poisoning, they go and check your blood and say, ah, she has the antibody. And she got, she had food poisoning a long time ago or has right now, okay? And just because scientists can detect and it might show this antibody in the blood. I do not have that antibody, you have. Okay, for example, I have it, you don't have it, doesn't matter, just anything. 
Okay, structure of antibody continued. Again, I will talk, I talked about it. Oh, these, these four chain of protein molecules, they're connected together by disulfide bond right here. Disulfide bond right here, disulfide bond right here. So they're connected together. This is why, like this, the four chain of um, amino acids, protein molecules, they're connected together by disulfide bond right here. Is attached to that bond. Okay. Uh, monomers antibodies consist of the Y-shaped molecules called monomers and may be uh, paired together as a in a dimer and pentamer is a five cross thread and you know we about those uh, neutralization antibodies code viruses toxins completely neutralizes and then uh, that's what I was talking about a few slides back right here when we talk about this when the antibodies surround the pathogens right here completely that your textbooks calling them a neutralization okay immune complex clump of antigens and antibody combined together is an antibody complex and um, the antibodies the acronym that i gave you before is damage Okay, so we have Ig. Ig stands for immunoglobulin. Okay, they didn't write it in here. You probably know it. Uh, Ig stands for immunoglobulin. Okay, so there are five major categories of them: IgD, IgA, IgM, IgA again repetition. IgG and IgE, they take care of damage for you. Easy to remember. So those are the five major antibodies. And each one of them has specific functions. For example, uh, your textbooks are gonna go over it. I'm not gonna go over it and read them to you one by one. But IgM is the first antibody that is made. It's at the site of infection. Just like neutrophil, they come to the site of infection first. And then the first antibody that is made is IgM. After a while, then IgG is the most important antibody. And when they check your blood to see if you have an infection or not, you had the disease or not, they check for IgG. IgG is very specific, you know, on the top of the Y shape right here. Those two are, they detect those very specific for that um, disease. IgM is non specific. So if they check the blood and it's early in the infection and it's IgM, it's not specific, um, yeah, you might have it, you might not have it. Very good. So this table, I'm not going to read it. You read it and then make sure you know it for the exam purposes and quiz purposes. Um, the location, where they are, IgM, IgG, IgD, the damage, and the functions. Next few slides talks about them, everything I said. Uh, they do talk about it, and again, I'm not going to read it. Um, if you have any question, please let, let me know. Monoclonal antibodies, they are, they can, we human can make antibodies that is similar to the, the disease. For example, if they want to check my disease, what do I have? What kind of disease do I have? Where do they get the antibody from? Where do they get the antigen from? Oh, right here. They get the antibodies, the antibodies and antigens in the laboratory settings, which is shown right here. They take the, uh, they take the plasma cells and they take the cancer cells, they combine them together, okay? They combine them together and, and now it's a uh, hybrid cell. They call it hybridomal cells. And these hybridomal cells, they can multiply, number one, because they, they have the cancer cells in them. And then number two, they can make antibodies right there, okay? So TCR is tell uh, T cells receptors and they are the one can, uh, remember I talked about APC in the, uh, a few slides past, antigen presenting cells. So when first we are ingested with an antigen, whatever it is, fungi, virus, bacteria, parasite, these cells, go recognize that one. They do not make antibodies. 
they're the first cells that recognize it and then they make the cytokines or interleukins. You remember I talked about cytokines? And the cytokines go to T cells and the T cells differentiate and become B cells and B cells make the antibodies. Just a few steps. That's it. Nothing big deal. Okay, major histocompatibility complex. It is when um, uh, my cells and your cells are different. On the surface of my cells, I have a different type of uh, protein molecules. And on the surface of your cells, you have different type of protein molecules. So when they take my body parts and they want to put them in your body parts, of course, I reject them. I mean, and I say that's a foreign material. For example, they remove your um, skin or your liver portion of it, and they want to put it in my liver. My liver says, my body, my immune system says, hey, that's foreign. That is no, no. So what they do, they give drugs to fight these uh, histocompatibility complexes. Okay, I hope that made some sense. But anyhow, human leukocytes, um, um, so these are cell-mediated uh, clonal expansion. Um, I think I talked about uh, most of these things. Um, uh, cytotoxic T cells, so has storage vacuoles that contain uh, perforins and enzymes called uh, grand, uh, granzymes. The granzymes are the molecules that actually um, they are responsible for synthesizing these um, uh, protein molecules like um, interferons and uh, perforins and other molecules. So I'll talk about that. So here's the cytokines. We talked about all of these. Here's a, uh, you've seen this famous uh, picture by pseudopods are eating uh, other cells. Alpha T cells secrete cytokines. We talked, I talked about that. Human uh, immunodeficiency virus is CD4 and CD8. These are, um, the numbers are low in the people who have AIDS and uh, until the numbers are not low, CD4, CD8, uh, the person does not have AIDS. Acquired immunity, I think we talked about that. Immunity can be brought about naturally through infection. Um, there are two types of acquired immunity, active and passive. So um, let's talk about active immunity a little bit. Um, individuals by mixed antibody and particular antigens, we've been talking about that, can happen through natural infection or through immunization involving vaccines and contain antigens antigens, uh, from pathogens and pathogens themselves are the first exposure to uh, antigen produces primary response, a second exposure to the secondary response, of course, involves memory cells. Here it is, if a person is a first exposure, uh, usually the IgM is produced, and then the second exposure usually have IgG. Okay, or you know, IgM is first, and after a while, you know, it goes IgM level goes down, and IgG level comes back up. Passive immunity: uh, it, it individuals that uh, that is given antibodies to combat diseases since not produced by the individual's plasma cells. Passive immunity is temporary, and this is in case of newborn. They receive IgG from their mother, or they receive uh, breast milk, that is passive immunity. It will go, it dies off after a while. Okay, so the passive immunity is not forever like acquired immunity. So I, I, cytokines, again, it comes up. So it is very important, you guys, that you know what cytokines are, um, uh, signaling molecules that produce T lymphocytes, macrophages, and other cells. Very important. Uh, regulates the white blood cells formation and functions, and interferons, as I talked about it, was specifically for um, uh, viruses and interleukins are cytokines that are for just about everything, for parasites, for bacteria, fungi, you name it, 
but interferons is just for uh, make for uh, viruses only. So there are a few now diseases that you're, it's the end of the chapter. I don't know how I'm doing on my time. I didn't bring any watch or any clock. Hypersensitivity reactions when um, your body starts making too much of uh, something. Usually in this case is uh, um, antibodies and it goes into your autoimmune system. When your body makes too much histamine, um, that's hypersensitivity. Immediate allergic response, uh, IgG, IgA, uh, and then food allergies, nausea, vomiting, so on and so forth. Anaphylactic shocks, they are like you're exposed to something immediately, that's called anaphylactic. Uh, it's immediate, your body responds immediately. And then we have delayed allergic responses, which it takes a why? Like if you're exposed to poison ivy the same day on the same spot, you will not have a big scar like this and itching like that. It takes a, a few hours, a days maybe, until you start itching and then it becomes a rash. I got it once. Oh boy, it was not, it was not a good thing on my leg. It just turned black. Oh, it itched and itched and itched. Um, but anyhow. Uh, tissue rejection, I talked about that, immunosuppressive drugs uh, because of the, uh, 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 I, I talked about this tissue rejections and then uh, xenotransplantations, it means you receive body parts from other animals and uh, they're working on it very hard and uh, most likely it's from pigs. Severe combined immunodeficiency diseases, so these are some of the diseases that are, could be genetics or um, we, you know, get it over time. Uh, Acquired immune deficiency, the AIDS, uh, but just getting an infection, uh, that one is an infection. So autoimmune diseases, uh, rheumatoid arthritis and rheumatoid fever, these are two that our own, our own immune system attacks our own uh, body, okay? That's what they call it, autoimmune diseases. Our own white blood cells and our own immune system are attacking our own cells, which is not very good. Uh, one case of it is rheumatoid arthritis, as I talked about. Lupus is another one um, that you're familiar with. Uh, it affects the, the DNA's anti-DNA antibodies. Our body's making anti-DNA uh, antibodies and that affects the entire body. Uh, the gravest disease, you've heard of that one, and multiple sclerosis, you also heard of that one that attacks the muscle cells. Uh, our immune system starts attacking muscle cells. Okay, so I'm done with this chapter. I think I talked about uh, everything except um, the diseases too much, but um, if you have any question, you can ask.